If we wanted to apply a local rule <clears throat> only to the pages on this particular website, so in our case, the default website, we just simply select default website, bring up output, output caching. You'll see that there's already a rule applied that's been inherited from the, uh, the web server. But I can go ahead and edit that and I can say, uh, actually on this website, I want a five second cache expiration rule. Back to our pages over here. Doesn't matter which one we pick. So it'll take a second for that change to ripple in. And now we've got nine seconds and then 15 seconds. 21 seconds. So there's a minimum of five seconds now between the refreshes of that page. The rest of those pages are being served up from the output cache. And we should see identical behavior on this page as well. So we've got 35, 41, and we'll see probably 46 or 47. There we go. So we've overridden the default website cache expiration with a local cache expiration. Sorry, we've overridden the default web server cache expiration with a local cache expiration policy. Now that applies to all PHP pages on the default website. What if we want to localize that further and say, actually, I only want to apply that expiration policy to, to one of these um, pages. I want the other one to inherit the default web server policy, or perhaps I want the other one not to be cached at all. How do I get that level of fine-grained control? Well, the way we uh, do that is through the web.config file. So when I created this local output caching rule on the default website, it will create, IIS will create for me Sorry, the Internet Information Services Manager will create for me this um, local web.config file. So it's in my inet pub www root folder. That's the um, virtual directory for my default website. And if we go in there and have a look at that web config file, you see it's fairly simple. It's an XML file that says as part of our configuration for a web server, we've got a caching policy and we're going to override the default policy and we're going to add in a new policy, which is to cache for a time period. So the, the settings we've set in the UI have been reflected here in, uh, in XML in our configuration um, file. And the duration of our cache is going to be five seconds. Now, if I wanted that to apply to only one of those um, PHP pages, rather than to be globally applied to all the uh, PHP pages on my site, I can do that by introducing a location element. So in my configuration file here, my web.config, I can say location path is and we will set the uh, no cache. So what was that one called? Time underscore no cache dot PHP. Time underscore no cache dot PHP. And to go in and close out that element. Now, what that's actually going to do right now is apply the five second um, expiration policy to the no cache page and the cache page will inherit the 10 second policy from the web server. Let's just see if that's correct. So the no cache page we expect currently to be inheriting the five second expiration policy. So let's let it get itself settled down. So we're showing 13, 18, 24. That looks right. That's about five seconds. And we should be 
experiencing a 10 second timeout on this page. Because this is inheriting the default web server caching policy. And that seems to be the case. Now, if we really wanted to apply the rules that enforced our naming convention on our pages, in other words, if I didn't want to cache the no cache page, uh, I could simply remove that line there. So on our no cache page, we are removing the caching that was set at a higher level. In, uh, in this case, it's set at the web server level. So no caching will be applied to this page, but the default caching will be applied to the other page. So no cache will, will have no caching and the time cache page will continue to have a 10 second cache associated with it. So let's just check that does actually work. So we're at 37, we'd expect this to jump to 47, 48. And then we'd expect 58, 59-ish, something like that. So we're seeing a 10 second caching uh, policy applied to time cache. It's inheriting the default web server policy, but no cache, we should see every time I click refresh, we'll get an update. So that's not being pushed into the output cache at all. So to summarize that, we can get very coarse grained control by using the, um, the UI in Internet Information Services Manager to set output caching policies at the uh, web server level and at the website level. And if we want to make changes that are much more precise uh, than that, then what we can do is take our web config file and start to add location elements in there to specify precisely what caching we want applied to particular dynamic pages on our site. For more details, um, I'd recommend you have a look at the page uh, hyperlinked there. And uh, in general terms, then the, the TechNet uh, website technet.microsoft.com is obviously a very useful resource, as is the IIS website itself, which is www.iis.net.